Hi, I'm Dr. Stephanie Lamelli, and today we are going to review how to access a posterior molar tooth for your Reb exam. We'll be using Aka Dentals X2 Endo Tooth number 30. I know a lot of y'all are concerned that you're going to be accessing a molar. When you haven't accessed a molar since second year endodontic simulation lab. I put together all of the images found in your endodontic lab manual here in an easy to access quick reference guide in what you need to do to be successful. The first step that you're going to be taking is you're going to be drawing a small access uh, point. You want to start in a very, very small, keeping in mind that on the mesial you're going to have two canals in that root. So you're going to have a little bit of a wider access. You're going to have that taper down on the distal because you're only going to have one canal. Now, depending on what tooth you have, there can be either one distal canal or two distal canals. In this situation, based off of the radiographs, it looks like you're dealing with only one canal. So you'll have a three canal tooth. So you're going to be making sure that you have access to your mesial buccal canal, your mesial lingual, and your distal canal. Here is a quick reference of all of the steps you need to take to be successful in having good access. We'll go through each of these steps throughout the endodontic access. First step that you want to do is you want to draw a small trapezoid in your mesial fossa. You want to keep your trapezoid going a little more on the facial than on the lingual side. Uh, and you can go to the mid-central group. From there, we'll be making a conservative access. And so as I go in, I can really feel that drop. You could almost see it on my hand piece as I went in suddenly. So that's the drop from entering the canal. I always like to um, start on the inner surface of the triangular fossa. So you don't want to be too far on the edge. You can kind of see where I am. So as I'm kind of tracing the outline form of the fossa, this is the deepest point of that fossa and then I went just a slightly more centrally, approximately. We can see that I'm about a millimeter in from the deepest part of the fossa right there. And that was kind of the limitations of my trapezoid. And I can also measure, and we can see how deep I am. So I measured about five millimeters deep, and I'm seeing that that's how deep I am going in. I move just a little bit more, see how I fall in. So that's me falling. So now I'm about seven millimeters and you really don't want to do that with this because we don't want to break this. But you can kind of just see how deep you are. So be cautious of locking it in and breaking a probe. You don't want to break that instrument on rub. See how deep we are. So we're just gonna open that up now. And every time I go in, I'm going inwards. And you can kind of feel that hook to where as you go in maybe two or three millimeters, you feel like a softness. And then I'm coming up on it. I'm coming up on the edge.
it, it came from the inner surface of the fossa and I'm going down towards the inner surface of the distal fossa now. So that's where it's gonna be my stopping point. So typically you wanna keep endodontic access from fossa to fossa. There's never really any need to go any further out than that. Keep in mind, you still lose a lot of tooth structure when you crown prep a tooth. From here, I'm going to start extending out. I like to make my initial shape a T shape with the upper part of the T in the fossa and then down the central groove. So as I enter, I feel a little bit of a catch. And so that's what I'm trying to get rid of. Now, because I'm pretty confident that this is where my um, access is going to be. And even before you start opening things up, you can even confirm. So we're going to go in and as I tip my explorer tip lingually and I bring the shank of it buckily, I can feel that I'm dropping in just a little bit more. Same thing here, I can feel that drop. And so it gives me a pretty good idea of where my canals are gonna be. Keep in mind, it's easy to do that because um, you actually don't need that much space. Keep in mind, a really good endodontist is like threading the needle. So I've just started to barely extend it out. I'm gonna take this a little bit slow because I know a lot of people are gonna be a little apprehensive. So as I stick my Endo Explorer in, we can see how far down I'm going. So I have identified this is the mesial lingual canal and as I'm inserting my probe in a mesial buckle fashion and you can see how angled my probe is. Um, and that's because I have that ledge. That's the ledge that we need to remove, so that way we have straight line access. Now we are going to use the Endo Z Burr. This is a good safe burr to open up your initial access. As you're cutting, keep in mind that there are three layers of the tooth. Each layer has a different tactile sensation with the pulp feeling a little bit like mush. It's easy to mistakenly think that you have overextended. However, you want to keep in mind that there is a ledge here that you have to remove in order to have straight line access. Once you remove that ledge, then your burr won't appear to be two millimeters over from where your access point was. Now I'm starting to remove the roof of my pulp chamber to convert my initial shape of a T into a more trapezoidal shape. From here we can go to a number four latch round to clean up the internal pulpal material. The best use of this burr is to rub against the internal aspects to remove all of the pulpal material for the Endo X2 tooth, the pulpal material will be like this reddish pink color. You want to insert the head of the burr and rub against the wall and then as you come out, you are trying to catch the roof of the pulp chamber. You wanna be conservative with your movement and make sure that you are Focus on only unroofing. You don't want to extend the pulp chamber any wider than it is. Use the endo spoon excavator to remove any pulp of material that was loosened with the number four latch burr. This process should not take long. You're doing a gross debridement so that way you can have clear visualization of the pulp wall. Here as I pull up with my burr, you can see that I'm having a little bit of catching on the ledge. You wanna make sure that you use your burr to identify any catching or ledging that is residual and remove that. 
To make these final modifications, you're going to alternate between stepping on the rheostat and pausing. So I am stepping on the rheostat initially, and then I will stop and have the burr come up, not in motion, and looking for any catching that I'm feeling. Once I find that, then I will step on the rheostat again and proceed to remove that. Now that we've removed all of the excess pulpal material, we can see what is still attached to the pulpal walls. We'll need to remove all of this material. Keep in mind, if you see red, you're dead. So you wanna remove all of the red pulpal material that you see here and remove the ledge that is exposed. You have two options in opening up the orifice. Your K3 GPAC file is an orifice opener. You're going to use it with a three time pecking motion. When you're in the distal canal, you'll apply slight pressure to the distal aspect. Here you're trying to remove that ledge and create straight line access. Your goal is to get rid of this little ledging and create a little bit more of that straight access. The second alternative is to use a Gates Glidden. Choose a gate size that is small enough to enter the canal passively. You're going to move the gates towards the wall to engage the ledge. Then pull up to actively remove the edge, creating straight line access. There is a stopper on the gates to measure the depth that you're going to be. However, it is more of a tactile sense that you're trying to feel for the ledge and pull up. I'm going to switch back to the large K3 GPEG file. Our goal is to create straight line access that will allow us to upright the file. This ideal glide path is created once you remove the ledge. Initially, it may have seen that you have overextended, but once you have removed the ledge and have straight line access, you will see that your orifice opening is actually at the extent of your access opening. In addition to excavation, you can also use irrigation to clear the canal. You can use a cotton pellet to dry up the canal. Here I am using the Endo Z burr up to the hub to remove the ledge. This is our post-op x-ray. Now we were running out of time and it was actually something that I thought would be good to have on our x-ray so that way you can see what can happen if you leave this little ledge. So on the distal, we got perfect straight line access. As you can see right here, a complete straight line. Now here on the mesial canal, we can see that we're a little bit um, angled this way. Then we have a little bit of a lump right here. And then we come into the canal with the curve. When we're using files, what we want to do is we want to try to get this little ledge that tends to be commonly, um, this is what's gonna kink, essentially cause almost a second bend. If we remove this angle right here, then as we have straight line access, then there's only one bend in the tooth. So would you go back and take that out? Or would you leave it for wrap? I would remove it. Okay. And it's as simple as coming in here and just pecking at the edge again, and you can do this with your orifice opener or gates glidden. I would use the orifice opener. For this one, your K3, your, your purple big giant one that it only goes, I think the length of it is 14 millimeters and typically a molar is about 18 to 20 millimeters long. So two thirds of that's going to be 12 millimeters more or less. So there's not a whole lot more that it, it can actually go down. So it's, it's really great for just getting that little ledge and opening up that. So you always want to use those going towards the, if you're working on the mesial side, you're going towards the mesial, um, trying to lift up on that. But you also want to keep in mind that there's a second plane there. So this could be what's in the middle between the two canals. So you also really want to take into consideration your angulation, your, your guide path of your endophile. Okay guys, thank you for joining me today on reviewing how to do a molar access for your endodontic rib exam. Today we did it on an X2 endo number 30 tooth. 
and our final form here. And as we see, we can have straight line access down the distal canal and you can actually see the distal canal right there. So I'm gonna pivot and we can see the mesiolingual and see how I am almost completely straight right at the line angle of my axis. And I'm going into the buckle and almost exactly there, maybe a tiny bit over, but almost exact. So that's about what you want for a nice conservative prep. You're gonna take your endodontic spoon excavator and rub up on the walls to ensure that you have no catch. This allows you to confirm that you have removed all of the pulp chamber roof. Remember, if you see red, you're dead. We can see there is no red, so there is no more pulp material on the walls. Thanks for joining me guys and good luck on your rev exam.